Hi guys, this is Nomenar. So recently, uh, the C the Arcanet CN server has started the second phase of the of the special event, but I haven't done it yet. And as you know, it's been almost more than a day since its uh since since its debut, but I just didn't have the time. So I spent another night, meaning tonight, to work on this template repo on GitHub for creating um creating a script creating scripts for things like v studio pro right right now you can only do that for pro because the basic version doesn't have scripting feature built into it and i use entire night to build up this template repo and on github the template repo means you can click this button called use this template and you will, you will be able to create your own new repo with exact same files in my repo so this is a quick way for me to share, you know, some of the scaffolding I've done um, to make this whole thing work. So the idea here, the idea here is, you know, since the V Pro takes Lua and JavaScript as um, as the scripting languages, but we as you know seasoned JavaScript developers, we prefer to use TypeScript, <laughs> and luckily Webpack. Webpack is able to build to bundle our TypeScript files, compiled sorry, compiled TypeScript files into a JavaScript file, single JavaScript file, which is really helpful. And anyways, so I'm just gonna go through how to do this, so you guys can take a look. So for example, I just call this, I just click on the uh, use this template button, and. Uh, just call it that. I don't need to include all branches. I need it to be public, and I will create this repository. All right. And after a few seconds, it is going to give me this. So it looks exactly the same. But let's clone it somewhere. And then use whatever editor you like. In my case, I use IntelliJ. Here we go. So this is just our new repo. And use it simple. So first you wanna install your dependencies. A couple of things here, a couple of things, like I, like I mentioned in this readme, a couple of things you wanna change is first, the name. So I would recommend just match this with the repo name. Okay, match your npm package name with the repo name, and change this author to whoever you are. And if you do that, don't forget to change it in here as well, because this is also your name. Uh, and license very important. And if you want to change the license, you go change your license. Um, and after doing that, use now that you know the dependencies have been installed, you should be able to start building stuff. Okay. This should build just just fine. Okay, so it builds into this disk folder, and you can see that this file name is exactly the same as the package on it. That's because I set it right here. <laughs> so yeah, you can you can totally change it, but I think this is helpful because when you distribute your script to other people, you want it to be unique. You don't want it to be colliding with someone else's. And this is how you can take your name. Um, so let me copy paste it over here. And then you tell v to reload. I mean, rescan. And at this time, you should see it right here. Okay, TypeScripting example. And that's the one I'm And right now, it does only one thing. It just gives you a, so right now it just gives you a hello world. And that's implemented right here. So remember in uh, v scripts, the two required function you need to implement. One is get client info. And all you need to return is name, category, author, version number, and the minimum editor version that you support. Um, I've done some Webpack loading stuff here. You just take the name from package.json, take the author name from package.json, and stuff like that. But anyways, you can customize it however you want. That code is right here. 
and the other one is May, and that that kind of that kind of is a ubiquitous name, right? May is the entry point for almost all the uh, all the languages out there, and right here we only have logged out info, and this is just something utility I just implemented because I I think in the future I'm gonna um I will be I will be doing some debugging, and there's no effective debugging in this, so the, the best you can do is just having some prompts that keeps going out, uh, keeps keeps popping up. So this one, okay. So in this case, I log at the info level with the message called "Hello World," um, and it has the pop up for me. So if you want to implement your script, basically you're gonna deal with this, and. And uh, what's the nice thing about using Webpack is now you can develop your modules. You can have all your familiar mechanics of you know importing stuff from other places, and um, and including it in here, and that totally works. And you don't need to worry about you know this not being the global scope because I I do that in my framework code. And my framework code is very simple right now, and it's located right here. So this is your source uh, source folder where you want to write your files, and this is a framework folder that I've been actively working on. And this this kind of this is where I you know assign these to the global scope. Um, here is the logger. I even wrote my test, and to write my test, I even wrote some mocks. I don't think the mocks are super helpful, but I did it anyways. Um, you know, if I end up deleting them, that's even better. In the shim, shim folder here, shim is talking about the polyfills, and the polyfills are coming from CoreJS. And I noticed that promise doesn't work for some reason, so I comment it out. And if you don't need any of these, if you don't need some of these, just feel free to comment it out. Okay. Oh, I just realized maybe I should be able to comment out DOM connections because this is there's no DOM. DOM. Um. But yeah, but when you do that, when you comment it out, first of all, it's gonna reduce the output script size, and second of all, is you need to go back to your TS config to remove not comment out because in JSON you can't comment out stuff. You need to remove the features that corresponds to. So in this case, uh, there's a ES, there used to be a ES two thousand five. 2015 dot promise. I have to remove that. And there's a, I think there's a yes 2017 dot promise. I have to remove that. Uh, if you come out stuff, you need to remove that so that when when TypeScript does the type checking, it, it identifies that something you don't have. Um, you kind of want that. So right now, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna um, do is I'll take something from uh, the official. Official scripts folder, sorry, scripts repo. Uh, there are scripts examples, and try to adopt them into this, uh, into this example repo. Okay. Um. So first, we need to go to the repo. So yeah, I decided I decided to push off Arcanites for this. So <laughs> so test. Um. Let's see. So. Let's do something different. Um, I think I haven't mm, haven't read the navigation code. Okay, looks it looks short. Navigation, so you get a navigation, and then you get the current time view range, and this is left, right, because it's left and right, and you want to set the time scale to something. I can't tell if this is a lot larger or smaller. But you want to move. Basically, you are gonna move your window. Okay, not move the window, but move the piano scroll that that you are seeing. Okay, let's let's take that on. That should be a fairly fairly straightforward conversion. Um, ignore this. This is a failed example. So let me copy paste the code somewhere. Okay, let's see. So yeah, let count number. Actually, I don't even need to. Add. And I kind of like arrow functions. I'm gonna do arrow functions. Interval call back. OK, 
Okay. So we're gonna get navigation main. So you see the auto complete there. Const t left equals nav main dot get time view. So in this case, you could even you know use array destructuring because TypeScript is gonna compile it down to ES5. So we don't need to worry about that. Uh, nav main. Actually, does ES5 already have a Latin const? I don't remember. <laughs> it's it's like so uh such a long time ago. So T left plus just for simple for sorry to make it obvious. I'm gonna do that. Count smaller than one hundred. So you will notice that site timeout. Uh, this is from the testing library, but it's not the type timeout that you have in your browser or Node.js, and that is because because of the library, the lib setting in tsconfig, right? and this is what we want because in this environment we don't have site timeout as a global object. We only have a SV version of that. SV dot site timeout, and one thing I'm thinking about doing is actually kind of polyfill that polyfill that myself because. This one is a different signature than what we are used to. Uh, interval callback. And remember, when your script is down, it's done, you need to call sv.finish. And you always need to remember to do that. Okay, so it wants me to take care of the parentheses. And now onward to the main function. So one thing that I'm not quite um, demonstrating here is the ability to use later syntax, because I don't remember if Latin const is, uh, is available are available in ES5. But things like um, object dot keys dot entries and things like that, and those are polyfilled by CoreJS. Um, and some of them are new, and that I know. So main seems like it doesn't return anything. So main is just gonna be. Okay, I think I can copy paste this. Host. Oh, I see. Can navigation. Set time scale. Okay, it looks alright to me. So this one, I will just get rid of it. Oops. Sorry. I mean this. This should be compiled. And we are going to see it right here. So you see right now it's 1.8 megabyte. Oops. What I'm going to show you later is how that will be, that can be reduced. Fifty. It wasn't very obvious, was it? Let me change that to five hundred. A log is defined but never used. Yeah. So notice that these are injected into this function. The dependencies are injecting into this function right? because I don't want to expose too many things on the global object to to facilitate with uh, module building. Two. Hmm. It's not triggering. What is it? Hmm. 
Let's uh, print something. Let's see. Let's see how that helps. Or another thing it could be just because my uh, my project is empty and that's why it can't move anywhere. Uh, maybe let's just draw a few nodes. Okay, move them far away. And then go back here. Alright. Okay, so you can see this is moving. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna move. It's a okay, so it's pretty clear right now. Um let me close some of this. I don't want to <laughs> keep filling up my memory, but as you can see, uh the reason the reason it wasn't moving earlier was because my product was empty, but the code totally works. And this is gonna go to a hundred. Oh, nice. You can use enter key to close them. Okay, it's almost, almost 100. Nice, nice. So another thing I want to show you is um, building, building it. Because building it will run the minifier. And that's going to significantly reduce the size. See, 160 kilobytes from 1.8, which is approximately 1800 to 160. Right, that's how much it has changed. And if, if anything, it will still work. So yeah, this is it. And I hope you're as excited as I am, because I'm gonna pe I'm gonna be putting more time into this. I can make it. First of all, implement more features into the framework and getting the folder structure more usable. So in the meantime, I want you guys to give me some advice or tell me if there is any problem or whatever feature you want to see to be into this. And no, and note that uh, not every feature is possible. For example, uh, Synthetic V does not give you, uh, at least for now, does not give us any ways to talk between processes. So there's no IPC calls um, and there's no file system access. So it's going to be hard for some of the things to be implemented, but I hope you keep going on this and I hope you can, um, you can all be part of it and let me know how it goes. And I'll be, I'll be ready to answer your questions on my Twitter or you can leave a comment in here. I don't, I don't mind checking. And so thank you. And I will see you guys later for ArcNet CN. Yay.